on this beautiful Friday morning. <laughs> I almost said Wednesday. You know me. I never know today. So I'm so excited today. I'm going to be showing to you and I will show you a couple of variations of this her lovely herringbone chain. It just goes so nice with our pendants and not just this pendant but other pendants as well. I'm going to turn you down just in a sec and show you all the love. I've got so much samples here to show you. Um, it has been one of my favorite i have to say i'm gonna say it is my favorite beaded chain look because it looks very elegant it looks actually much more than what it is we're going to be using beads we're going to be stitching them together with the herringbone technique herringbone stitch technique but um it's actually does look like just like a chain just like any other chain you would buy just looks like a chain so i love it it's so versatile we can use it for so many different um pendants many different many different things you could you, you could use beaded beads on the top of it if you wanted to and then you can swap things about do all sorts of different um things with it and just grab these out so how are we all doing today let me know how's the weather where you are here is a little bit overcast i don't think we're gonna have <laughs> a very good weather for the weekend but i um, really wanted to go down at the beach and um have a barbecue on sunday because I, i've got a special event next week on tuesday but obviously tuesday everybody's going to be at school so and and work so i wanted to do something at the weekend but um i'm hoping i'm i'm crossing my fingers because it was nice yesterday and the day before that it comes back out and it's going to be nice and sunny again for um for sunday and we get some good weather and we and get to go down to the beach and celebrate a little bit right okay so let me turn you down and i'm going to show you all these lovely samples i made so many over the years so this is definitely my my go-to technique to do anything really any of them and i'm going to show you simon has given us a lovely offer let's just go down to the mat and <laughs> These were all undone and then Christopher came in yesterday and I did the necklaces back up for me again. Bless him when I was sitting here. And um, I just love it. I just really do love it. Right, very quickly I'm going to come and say hello and then we're going to go down. I'm also going to show you the website quickly as well. <laughs> no, my computer just said no. <laughs> Never mind, let me just pull this out. There we go. So I'm going to share my screen very quickly, pop over to the website, and then we can go down to the mat and we can stay on the mat then. So, very good morning to you, all of you. Um, just quickly, morning, Charlotte. And Charlotte is saying she's looking forward to learning this one. It's so, so easy. And I will show you a couple of different um, techniques with it. Morning, Camille. Debbie is saying she's looking forward to this one. Morning, Pauline. Morning, Sue. Uh, Char Charlotte is saying vet here in Cambridge. Oh, I hope the rain is not coming this way. Morning, Ruth. It's Murphy. Annie. Camille. Camille is saying the sun is trying to peep out here in Wiltshire. Good morning, Joy. Oh, Smuffy's saying she had rain as well, most. Oh, and everyone from a cloudy Western Supermare. So Jenny's saying that it's a cloudy in a Western Supermare as well. It's always sunny there, Jen. <laughs> Come on, what's going on? Good morning, Lucy, Joe, Thelma, Trisha, Mina. Mina is in a cloudy Leicester as well, so it must be all over the UK. If you're watching internationally, do let me know. How's the weather where you are and where you are watching from? Um, good morning, Mina. There, Sheila, Vet and Windy in Washington. Oh, bless. Natalie, Isla, Debbie, Brenda, good morning. Francis, Pamela, Winnie, so many love yous are here. Sue is good morning. Joe, good morning. Elaine, Jitty, Annie, Linny, Kim. Kim is saying, good morning, Kitty. Day off for me today as it's raining, but I get to join all of you today. Oh, well, you're very welcome. You're going to have so much fun. So he's saying, my video is posed. It's everyone else's. Um, do let me know if there is a problem, if there is anything happened. <laughs> it's rolling on my end. Right, okay. So, Shell, good morning, Bethan, Linda. Good morning, Robin. Karen, 
So many of the lovelies are here. Right, okay, so very quickly, let's pop over to the website and then we're gonna stay down to the mat. So, by now, you know the drill. So it's totallybeads.co.uk. You need to go on. You're gonna go into either the categories, yeah, at the top, or you're gonna press this big button here, which is says video tutorials at 10 a.m. We're gonna go into today's one, which is the herringbone necklace. So we did the fleur pendant on Wednesday and do check that one out. So if you haven't seen it, do check that one out because um, they are just really beautiful. I love I love those Amos beads and I love how the whole pendant is comes together. So do check the fleur pendant out. Now I'm gonna go into herringbone. And we got quite a few colors added. Now there, there are the col colors added, which is like the one which is on the white background, like this one at the top, and this. And this one, they are the brand new fleur colors in the herringbone chain. And then you got the other ones as well with the fleur, fleur, fleur pendants on there. Now, we, I have given you a, a lower, a new low price for the necklace. So it, it includes your beads, your seed beads. It includes your class. And I'm just going to pop into one of them. Let's Let's pop into this one. Since it includes your seed beads, it includes your toggle crops. Now, if you want to, and this is why I just want to point it out to you, if you want to, because like we all got needle and thread <laughs> at home, so if you want to add, if you need needle and thread, you can add it on there. If you want to change your toggle to a sterling silver toggle, then you could do. And if you want to change, if you don't fancy the toggle, but you want the lobster gloves, you can add that to on the top of your kit as well. So I'm going to go back and just very quickly. So we've got plenty of different colors, but you will learn the technique and you can do any color you like. Now, the I have to point this out, the starlight is a little bit more expensive because the seed beads themselves are a little bit more expensive, but the rest of them are all $2.99. And it comes with instructions as well. So, right, I'm going to come back to you and then we're going straight down to the mat. There we go. So look, look how many gorgeous colors I have. And what I really do love, and I'm, I'm wearing one of the pendants already, but what I really do love, so when you make your pendant, and I'm just gonna bring this pendant in, I think the, the pendant itself, you can put it on a chain or you can put it, or anything you really like, you can wear it. Let me just give a little bit more light so you can see, there we go. A bit more on the sides as well. There we go. So um, when you make a pendant like this, it's really nice. I just want to want the camera to focus on it. It's really nice and beaded, and you can just wear it on a chain, any chains you have. But I think when you make, so if you use the seed beads from the pendant, and then you make a herringbone chain to go with that pendant, then all of a sudden that pendant becomes. A part of the necklace and it becomes um i think it just makes it look like even better i really i really do love um combining all the different colors and you can i use size 11 seed beads but you could do you know you could use any size 11 seed beads for any color what you want to match right okay so um that's that's the blue one there's all the all the different colors for appendants and i'm not gonna sort of uh, dwell on this too much. This, this is the 993, the one with the suede color. It's really beautiful as well. That It's really nice to match up. But what I want to show you, we have been doing other pendants lately. So I got this Cassandra here. Now this Cassandra here is using like a hematite color. Let me just move this up. A hematite color seed beads. And when I add the hematite color necklace to it, just like gone for a second. It will work with that one as well. Beautiful. Let me just get this out of the background because I think we're getting too much. It will work beautifully with that one as well. And you can match any any other. Let me just grab another Cassandra pendant. But equally, we had we had the Victoria pendant pendants they would they would be really nice as well or any of the other ones now this one for example 
This one is using the Starlight, which is one of the, the ones we have started because we use, we made them one of the pendants, the red ones to go with that one. What else have I got when I got here? Just grabbing a few out. This one is one of the new colors as well. And as and I started, I'd done a little sample of this one. So that, that one is on there as well. But the red, red again is on there. So that, that will be the same. There's all sorts of, all sorts of different ones. Right, okay, so, oh yeah, there is the one I was looking for. <laughs> there is the one I was looking for, <laughs> the blue one. Um, because what I wanted to show you is this, that, can you see? It's the same seed beads for both of those. I'm just going to go through this as well. So you can see, oh, wrong way around. It's Friday. <laughs> Usually... I need to take a sip of coffee, coffee, Camille, don't I? So can you see like the same chain, then we could wear both pendants with it and both of them is going to look like it's the part of the necklace. So you could swap and change things with it. Now, once you have sort of settled on the color you want to do and before actually you do settle on the color, the what was the name of those pendants? So these ones are the Cassandra. They did this. Um, Lucy, do remind me. I think quite some time ago um, we had a big bundle where you made like 20 different colors of pendants with all sorts of different seed beads I want to say this was March April time but we did all a whole loads of them right okay so before we go any further what well, I just want to show you this one the one you choose your color the other thing what you could do is to make it multicolor so here and I'm going to bring this up I have got two colors on the same and I'm going to, I'll show you how to do this one as well on the same necklace, but equally you could add four colors into it if you want to. Now, when you have two colors on the same necklace, then what happens is that not long you can wear the pendant, what is meant to be, but you could wear um, another colors as well, which is using this, um, this other color. So you, you, you got so much you could do. I personally prefer a single color, just sort of because it looks really elegant. Oh, it was in April. Um, Lucy just popped the link in for the, the Cassandra pendants, these ones. But it's really up to you. You can really tailor it to your own, own liking, I guess. Right, okay, so let's get started now. There is two different, and I'm... I'm going to show you this bracelet. This is herringbone chain as well. Now there is two different ways of doing the herringbone stitch. Now this one is a straight one and I haven't got a um, size 11 in straight. They, they all slightly twisted. So this is the straight version and uh, when I do bracelets I tend to do a straight version. I, we did this bracelet sometime last year. I can't, I, I really can't remember this one, but I think this one, if you look by kind on the, with the video tutorials, you will be able to find it's like an ombre color we did. And these are losing size eight seed beads. Now, the other one, which we, which I love for the necklace is a twisted version. So can you see this one is really straight, more like a cube structure. And this one is the way how we did the stitching. I mean, I can untwist it but the minute I let it go it will twist back in I just can you see I love using the twisted version for a necklace and a straight version for a bracelet both stitches exactly the same it's just like how you start and how you're going to be going through your beads but I will talk you through that one would this work with a beaded cover and Elaine is asking absolutely it would it would like you could put it on whatever whatever pendant you make with a little bell you can add them onto it and because we either have a toggle clasp or either you can have a lobster clasp and this is the sterling lobster clasp on this one um obviously on one side you got the lobster clasp on the other side you're going to have just a closed ring you can have both through any of the pendants so if it's got a big enough bail uh, to put like a six millimeter jump ring through there or if you go for the toggle one it's even smaller because you can turn the toggle nuts <laughs> the bracelet you can turn the toggle and the end becomes even smaller and you can put any any pendant you can put like a um lamp rock pendant on there anything you have right okay so 
I am gonna, which color shall we demo with? This is always the hardest part. Which color are we gonna demo with? And I'm gonna show you, I only done little snippets last night of these new colors. So let's do one of these new colors. I really do love one. I think that's one, maybe the gold one. Gold one has the gold. Will the gold show up? Or do we need, it's a bit shiny. We need something a little bit more matte. And actually, thinking about matte, I know you're going to be doing this stitch in size 11 beads, but I might show you in size 8 or shall I show you size 8 or get, I think something like that will show up quite well. Or is it too dark? What do you think? Green, teal, um, tealy color. Um, we could do any of the other colors as well. Just need to go and grab the seed beads. What shows up the best? If I get if I get a non shiny color, just to we got a non shiny color, maybe the red. No, the red is red is very hazy as well. This one is very very shiny on my mat because you really need to see what bead I'm coming out of and what bead I'm gonna go in next. You do the tail, yeah. I'm gonna do this one because I think we're gonna be able to see this very well. So it takes the shine away from the beads. Let me grab um, size 11, if we go grab size 11, and then I'm working with exactly the same size as you did. Right, size 11. I've got my little boxes with all my seed beads in, look, and just I'm gonna grab the, that color out. So I think we will be able to see that color very, very well. So I only need four pieces of size eight. And then we're gonna need the majority. What we're gonna need is gonna be size 11. Just pull this to the side. Now I'm gonna grab a needle and thread it up. You know, I love matching the colors of my beads with the bobbin so super long i'm using it comes in 36 different colors lot lot of colors right so the way how we're going to start this herringbone stitch we're going to start on one end and go all the way to the other end come on needle i think i really need to go and get my eyesight checked but when you one, two, thread something. It actually looks like there's something in the eye of the needle of that one. When you wanna uh, thread something really, really quickly, when you live on air, it actually never happens. Right, so troubleshooting, troubleshooting your threading needle. So this one is actually cut quite flat that way. So when you're having trouble doing your needle, but I, suggest is that to cut your thread in an angle just like that but this one and then get rid of the end so this way you make and if i bring you up i don't I'm sure if you can see it if it will focus on it better enough. can you see i i created a pointed end on my thread there and then we all lick our threads and if you do have got lip gloss or something like that one that will bind the fibers together end and i'm going to bring the needle to the thread not the thread to the needle and if it doesn't really want to go through one way and it's actually just went through then i you can turn your needle around because the way how they punch the eye of the needle is always from one side to the other side and um it's always easier to go with the way how they punched it Right, so I got my thread. Now we, I'm gonna leave on my bobbin just for the sec, but we don't really need it because with this stitch, what we do, we start on one end and then we work our way all the way to the other end. Paul is saying she can't see the herringbone chain on the website. It is on there, lovely. Um, Lucy, would you be able to just pop the link in there for um, for Pauline? How many grams of Toho? Size 11, we need to make a 20 inch necklace. So that is 10 grams what you see there. And where 
I think they they turn out about 16 to 18 inches depending of how there is. I had a little tidy up and I tidied my little ruler away and now I can't find it. So this one is a whole bag of size 11 and this one is actually just over 20 inches. So eight, 18 to 20 inches you can make from a 10 gram bag depending of how tight is your tension. I can see the kits but not the red one. So the red pendant, what we did, it, that was with gold seed beads, but you can't see these red, this red one. So, Simon, if you are listening, can you please add this red one onto there as well? It's 25C, the seed bead, <laughs> what I used on there. He knows what I mean. Um, right, okay, so we're going to start with picking up two seed beads size eight and then we're going to go straight through the loop on the clasp it doesn't matter which clasp which end you're going to use first and i'm going to pull this up i'm going to suspend this in the air so you can see really what i'm doing and i'm going to actually zoom in very much so you're going to be very nice and close so two seed beads went through the loop and then what we're going to do we're going to go back through the two seed beads we have there, the two size eight. So we are trapping that toggle on the end there, just like that. I'm gonna pull this up nice and tight. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick up two size 11 seed beads. I'm gonna go back down through the two size eights and at the same time I'm gonna come through the loop on the toggle clasp itself and I'm going to pull this up nice and tight. So when I pull this nice and tight, I'm going to tap on the top here. So those two size 11s we just added is going to sit side by side just on the top. Then I'm going to go back up through the size 8. So we're going to go back and down through the size 8 quite a lot. And then I'm going to pick up another two size 11 and I'm going to go back down again. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to go back down the two size eight through the loop on the clasp as well and pull this through just like that. And then I'm going back up to the two size eight seed beads. So overall, I sewn this end to my clasp three times. So I got a really nice and strong connection. And when I does, did some beading, I will come back and sew my tail end off. And again, probably going to go through there a couple of times. So this is a really great way to start your herringbone stitch because you already got something to hold on to. With herringbone stitch, like even if you do a flat one or even if you do a tubular one like this, the first few rows is the hardest one to do. Um, Tina is saying tip always start with the circle stop threads getting caught by the bar yeah like you just have to have uh, um, you have to have um, you have to just look out for that one so you don't get caught on there right okay so we're gonna start the herringbone stitch so if I turn this if you look at this from above we're just coming out in just sort of next to one of those seed beads. So you need to go through, how far I can come in? You need to go through one of those seed beads. It doesn't matter at this point which seed beads you're gonna go through. So I'm just gonna come up through this seed bead, just like that. So then, and I'm still looking from above. I got four seed beads here. So I got one in the top right corner. I got one at bottom right, I got one at bottom left, and one on the top left. So I'm going to pick up two seed beads, and you're going to pick up these two seed beads all the way again, always picking up two seed beads. So as my thread is coming out on the top right corner, I'm going to go down into, so I'm going down towards the table with my needle into the bottom right and when I pull this up these two guys just gonna sit here they're just gonna sit there just just like that and then as I am coming out I'm going coming out towards the bottom towards the toggle on the bottom right I'm gonna go come up through the bottom left so I'm stitching up and down up and down 
And again, I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to pick up two seed beads and go down through the top left. But because we would be we, we going around in circles, but here, when I'm stitching down, it would be on the other side of me. So what I do before I do anything else, that I turn my beadwork. Just turn, like if you're holding the end just like that, just turn it around. So your thread is coming out on the top right. And I picked up the two seed beads. I'm going to go down through the bottom right and pull this up. And then I'm going to come up the bottom left, but I'm going to ignore this one at the bottom and I'm going to go straight to the top. So as I come down on one bead, I'm going up on one bead as well. And then when I pull this up nice and tight, I'm going to turn this again. So once again, I'm coming out on the top right corner. Just bring this in. Let me just cut this bobbin off because we're not going to need it anyway. So I'm coming out on the top right corner, picking up two seed beads. Going down the bottom right corner, pulling this up nice and tight. Now, if they don't sit straight away in the right manner that I want them to sit, just tap on the top and they will fall into bees. So I've gone down on one bead and I'm going to come up one bead. And then I'm in a position, I'm going to turn it again. So again, I'm coming out on the top right corner, picking up two. Going down. Pulling this through. Oh, Simon says he's on it and he's going to try to find an image for the red one. And topping on the top and again I'm just going to come up through one one seed bit and over and over you're going to repeat this now once you get a little bit more like sort of relaxed with the stitch what I usually do is pick up two seed beads and I'm going to turn my beadwork that way because you always see the end is kind of like trying to move away from each other you, you see like a shape of a Y on the on your beadwork so as once once i get a little bit more comfortable and i did an inch or so um at the same time as i'm coming down on one bead here so i just need to come down on one bead i kind of like wiggle my needle and go up through the so i'm coming down towards the center of of the herringbone bead on the bottom right and i'm going up to that bead, the bottom left in the same sort of stitch through. That just speeds up your your beadwork because then once I pull it up, I'm ready to turn. I'm just gonna turn it just like that. I'm usually wrap the thread around my spare fingers here just to hold it nice and tight. And then I'm repeat, I pick up two seed beads, I'm gonna come down on one, and then I'm gonna go up on the other side of the Y there. There we go. I'm just going to pull this nice and tight and keep on going. So what do we think? Um, have you tried this before? If you haven't tried it, do let me know. I think I love it because it's, if, especially if you're doing this twisted version, it's a no brainer stitch because like you are just doing the same thing. You're coming down on one bead and going up on one bead. So whatever you want to do them in the same stitch, or you're going to pull that pull the thread through in two parts so you're going to pick up the two beads you're going to come down pull your thread through and then go up whichever way is more comfortable for you and i'm going to turn now if you want to introduce another color or if you want to do two colors, that's, um, I love doing two, two colors. You can do up to four colors because we're working with four seed beads. So let's do, let's look at the two color versions and then I'm going to show you the straight version as well. So just coming down and then 
this is the you can go back up to speed up your now I'm gonna grab another color bead so I do have let's have this nice and light color so we can really see it next to it so Camille is saying she wanted to make this for a while we'll have a go Judy's Judy saying Kitty WN do let me know what WM mean. <laughs> Probably she was ask, trying to ask something. Right, so if I if I want to do two colors, you know, at the very beginning when we went backwards and forwards between our class. So the first two seed beads, I would have added one color and the second two seed beads, I would have added another color. So, um, and then all the way through, that's what you're going to do. On one side, in one stitch, you're going to pick up color A. And then on the other side, you're going to pick up color B. Really easy. And then once you get to the other end, you're going to have this really nice twisted to color necklace or bracelet. Or even if you just use it as a component and add other things onto it. So when I'm coming out of color A, I'm going to pick up color A. And then go up. And then I'm, when I'm coming out of color B, I'm going to pick up color B all the way along and again I can go up and down in the same stitch just to could you wear it necklace with a pen then Pauline absolutely absolutely good and what I love about this so if you made this a probably oh, wrong color probably for a male I would make the straight version which I'm going to show you just in a sec so if you made it in like black or I don't know whatever color they like well but more sort of a maley colors or dark blue or well any color could be a male color I guess like nice browns and even beige or you know but whatever color whatever whatever color they prefer you you can have more of a um a male looking bracelet with the same technique as well but I would do a straight definitely a straight one for a male and a twisted one for a female. Not, I can't really say that because I I use the straight one for a bracelet as well. But um, I think the twisted one it just gives a little bit of a. I don't know. Can you say like the twisted one is a bit more feminine, or I just thinking because obviously us ladies we do curl our hairs and do things. I don't know. I think both cute. This twisted one is really cute. Right, so. I'm not going to go much further with this one. You you kind of get that you could do all sorts of different. Now, if you wanted to do four colors, you could do I um you could pick up. You will pick up the same the beads the way how you want those colors to sit. So if you're coming out of color A, so you would pick up A then B, go up and down. I haven't got another two colors. Yeah, you know, I got that till. I'm going to pick up, hold on, I've got a couple more seed beads here. Different colors. Just grabbing them. Let's grab this one. This is all going to be tealy color, so I don't know how it's going to look like. But So we start A and B, and then you're going to go C and D. So if you want all four colors, and just going to go, and then you're back into A. So again, you're going to know you're going to pick up A, this is using four colors, then B. And then you're going to pick up C and D. So you, all sorts of different things you could do. And it's all going it's going to look really, really nice. Now, the key to herringbone stitch is to keep a little bit more of a tight attention. So you, the beads are sit together really nicely. So do try to perfect that. I do suggest if you've never done herringbone stitch before, do a little test piece. I mean like an inch or a couple of inch, just practice. Because if you jump straight into it, and I've seen it so many times when I taught this as a class, or you know, when when you when when other people were making it, that when you look at the finished piece of a necklace, then they did it for the first time. The first two inches are going to be quite loose. And after that, they get like tighter and they get to sort of a normal, um, 
what I say, like a, no a normal tension, then the line and the other side of the necklace is going to be perfect. So I always suggest to do a couple of inches, just a little test the thing, and you can, you can maybe use that for something else and then start on the necklace. So I'm just going to do one more round of these four colors just so you can see how is it all coming together. But I picked up A and B and then C and D and really that's there to it. And equally doing this is a four bead herringbone, you could do a six bead herringbone if you wanted to. So can we see now all four sides are a different color and it's once it's, these colors are start to twist around when you've done you know a few inches you're really going to see all four colors and it, do, it does look really beautiful how long roughly to make for a pendant it depends <laughs> how big is your neck diane i quite like my one like pendant sitting a little bit further down so my one is around 20 inches Um, Charlotte said I would have jumped straight in so it's a great tip that's that's to make a little starter piece but it's like anything it's not just in beading like when you try to do knitting or do some uh, any other craft I always like to do I, I, I do like to start to jump straight in and like do painting paint the biggest picture you can you can try to find but <laughs> at the same time I do like to like do like a little bit of a tester piece right i'm just going to move these seed beads out and then i'm going to show you how to do the straight version so this one you can already see it started to twist and that's because we're going down one and going up one going down one going up one um all the way along now if you want to do the straight piece because this is a straight piece as well and like here i blend like Look at this one. We have four different colors going at the same time. This one, we got the colors like I used, I did two blocks of four with every color and moved up and then moved down in the colors. I got one here, which we did, I think this was last summer, we did a rainbow herringbone. So this one is doing one block of four with each one of those colors, colors as well. Right, so the straight version, the straight version, I'm just going to move this, I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to have to start with the bar end at this, this time. So the straight version, I'm going to start exactly the same. I'm going to pick up two size eight, go to the loop on my clasp. And then I'm just pull a bit more thread through here. I'm going to suspend this and I'm going to go back up through those two seed beads. Just like that. And then I'm going to repeat. So starting up until here is exactly the same for both versions, picking up two seed beads, going back down into the clasp, just tapping on the top. So they're going to sit nice, then going back up, picking up another two, coming back down. And going back up and we're gonna start our stitch so again we got our four beads I'm just gonna come up through any bead it doesn't really matter and I'm gonna start my stitch the same way as I started with a twisted version I'm gonna pick up two top right corner going to the bottom right going up the bottom left and I'm gonna turn so that was kind of like step one. Now step two, you pick up two. You're going to come down one bead on the bottom right, just one bead on its own, but, and this is the big but, <laughs> you're going to go up through two seed beads this time. And pull this up nice and tight. And I'm going to turn. I'm going to pick up two. I'm going to come down on one, step one, go up one, a step one. This is the difference. And then step two, you're going to turn, you're going to pick up two, you're going to come down on one seed, one seed bead, but you're going to go up through two of the seed beads, not just one. So I'm going through two. And pull this up nice and tight then turn again 
picking up another two, coming down on one, going up on one. So when I'm doing this version, I tend to stitch up and down separately. When I'm doing the other version, I tend to do the Y thing on the end. So I'm coming down on one and going up on two. So that's the alternate it all the way down, all the way across. Um, yes, I found the twisted easier, but prefer the look of the straight. Um, which is easier, straight or twisted? Pauline is asking. It doesn't really matter. It's personal preference. I prefer the, I, I guess, with the twisted version, you don't need to think about it because you're going up and down like always one bead. With the straight version on your second, and you know when is the second part of your stitch on the straight version, because if I turn this to the side, you can see on one side I have more seed beads. Let me just move this in. On one side, can you see my little column is there is taller? So I know I need to do step two now. So I'm going to pick up two, come down on one and go up on two. It's just up to you what look you want to you want to have. They both they're both quite easy. And let me just pull this down. Hold on to it and then go up to the two. And pull this up nice and tight and then I'm gonna turn. And now I'm gonna come down on one and go up on one because if I turn it, can you see both of the ends are exactly the same side? Same side, so not same side, same size. I need a sip of my coffee. Camille, you just said coffee. Thank you so much. So I'm coming down on one and then I'm going up on one. I'm going to turn. I can see that one side is a little bit bigger than the other side. So I know this is my going to be my step two. So I'm going to pick up two. Then come down on one. And then go up. On two. And turn. Oh, Charlotte, thank you so much for the stars. Really, really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. I think that most of you like now it uh, um I did look actually into to have like a little spa days, but like everything is booked up in months in advance. So when I go to Hungary, I'm definitely gonna treat myself to something. I don't know what. But uh, we got like a little spa thing in the village. So I'll post some pictures if I do. But Charlotte, thank you so much for the stars. Right, Lorne is asking question. Could you grade beads, start size 11s, 8s? Yep, yeah, you could do all sorts of different things. Absolutely. But these are the base is of your herringbone stitch. And this is only a four bead one. And as I said, you could do more than four. You could do six if you wanted to. I just quite like the look of the four. Right, so I, I think we all, you, you, we get that, that how is that? Now I want to show you how to do the other end. When you get to the other end, and this is going to, I'm going to grab, <laughs> this is going to be, I could use it as a little extender piece on a bracelet, I guess. Um, so as I'm coming out of any of your, like in the top right corner, wherever it happens to be, I'm going to pick up two size eight beads and go through the loop on the clasp. Now this is the same even if you do one loop, well even if you do the twisted or the straight version, then I'm going to come back down through those two seed bits. So we're going to mimic what we have on the other side. So can you see those size 8 seed beads are connected to that size 11 at the top. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go up here. So I'm following my stitch around the same way as I would if I had added seed beads. But instead of adding new seed beads, I'm going back through the two size eight, the loop on the clasp, and then coming back down and going into this last one. 
And if I turn this, you can see there's there is still no thread path between these two beads there. You can see the thread path just underneath it of those ones. So I'm going to go back up through this one and that's completed every single thread path I need to have. I usually, when I'm there, I go back up the clasp and the loop and then turn around. See, it doesn't just happen when you do a T-bar. It can happen when you do a ring as well. That the thread wraps around it. Right, let me just get, pull this out. There we go. And then going back down. And then I would just take it down. Any beads, do a one thread knot a couple of times. And that's it. Your bracelet. <laughs> On this case, it's, I, I, don't, I don't even think we can do this up. It's very small. But... Um, what you can do with something like this, this could be your extender piece. So if you had a necklace, I'm not going to cut the ends off, but if you have a necklace, which you want to wear further down or further up, what I then can do is to use, let me just get one with a toggle. I can use, because it's got the same toggle, this as an expand, extender piece on the back of my necklace. So all of a sudden, if I have, a little piece like this I can wear my necklace shorter or I can wear my necklace longer and because the toggles class they just sit together nicely they just look quite neck decorative nice and decorative on the back of your necklace and especially if you are making jewelry for like sale or if you, if you don't know how big do you want to make it for somebody else doing something like this is a really nice idea because it allows the person to wear it further down or further up or like you know depending on do a size a necklace like the the, the main part of the necklace always do it to 16 inch and then do two inch and a four inch extender and then they can wear it together so if they depending on what or how they want to wear it. So they can wear it 16 inch, they can wear it 18 inch, and they can wear it 20 inch. I mean, you will need more class, obviously, but um, it will look really good. Should you think, great idea. Um, Tina Moss, or watch you on a bigger skin. I kept pausing, then doing a square. Um, once we finished with this one, you can go back and re-watch the video from the beginning. So you will be able to see what we've been doing. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so I can bring some of the other ones in. So the whole idea of this one is to match up your pendants and match up your, or anything you want to do with, with your chains. I love these chains because like from far away, they don't look like, like be the chains themselves. They, 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 they really... They're really nice. They're really nice ones to do. Lucy's saying that's a cool idea to do like the little extender at the back. Yeah, especially if you're making it. Um, oh, Camille is saying the sun is out where she is. Oh, come with set. Can we send me some sun, please? I mean, he's saying it's definitely easy as I learned watching Kitty at Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. It's very easy stitch. Looks easy enough. Um, she says, Camille says, Pia, would I'm watching the video back in Mirror Hub. So Pia, let me know. Are you left-handed? Uh, I'm left-handed. Okay, so if you are left-handed, then you're just going to do it in reverse. So you're going to have the needle in your left hand. Actually, I can show you with left hand as well. So anybody who's left-handed, do have a look. I might make a little bit of a pig's ears out of this one, but I will try for you to show it for you. Not a problem. I can use both of my hands for most of the things. So with left hand, you're going to start exactly the same. So I'm going to pick up two of the seed beads. I'm going to go through the loop on the clasp. Take this down. Where is the end of me? Well, let me just cut this thread off. This thread is just getting shorter and shorter here. So in this case, I'm going to wrap the end around in my right hand here. And I'm going to hold on to my class. And then I'm going to go back up through those two seed beads I just came through. And I'm going to pull this through just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead. I need some seed beads. Sorry, from the other side. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a couple of seed beads. Then I'm going to come down 
both of those seed beads and go through the loop on the clasp. And there we go. Again, if it's not doesn't sit quite straight at the top, just go and tap on it. So they're going to sit side by side. So what we're looking, the two seed beads just to sit side by side, just like that, just like two bricks would sit next to each other. So then as I'm down here and I can cream to through the loop on the clasp as well, I'm just going to go back up through the two size eight seed beads. Just like that and I'm going to repeat what I have just been doing. I just need to move this if I can a little bit down that way. So I've been using the same thread and I haven't left myself a lot to work with. Right there we go. Then I'm going to pick up another two seed beads and I'm going to come back down through the two size eight one more time and the loop on the clasp as well pull this up nice and tight again i'm just going to tap on the top so that all four of them is going to sit nicely together i get this tail end on the way and then i'm going to go back up and you're going to have the four seed beads right on the top so i'm going to go up through the two size eights and i'm going to go through one of the size elevens it doesn't matter which one you go through at this point, just go through one of them. So if you are left handed, you're going to be working on the left hand side of your herringbone chain. Let's just get the tail out of the way. So you're going to be coming out of the top left seed bead. Then you're going to pick up two size 11 seed bead. You're going to come down. So we're going down. I'm going down towards the table on the top on the bottom left seed bead. Just come doing this through. And then we're going to go straight up on the bottom right and pull this up nice and tight. And then I'm going to turn it. So once again, I am at the top on the left hand side. Then I'm going to pick up two seed beads. I'm going to come down towards the table on the bottom left. Just bring in a little bit more and pull this through. Then I'm going to go up through the bottom right. Just that one. Just keep this nice and straight. And then I'm going to turn again. So you are working on the left hand side and every single time you can see that the last seed beads are kind of like opening up and you starting to get that Y shape straight away. And you're going to continue and do the same thing. You're going to pick up two seed beads. Let me just see. Scroll down in the comments. I'm going to pick up two seed beads. I'm going to come down on the bottom left and if you wanted to you could do the same trick on this side and go up through the bottom right come on seed bead oh it's so hard to do it with the other hand when you used to like which hand you want to push so you could stitch into just like that into your Y so coming down on one side of the Y and going up on the other if you want to save time and then you're going to turn again and do the same thing over and over, always sewing the four seed beads together at the top. So to, I'm going to bring this up and show it to you just quickly. And this is just for left or right hand, it doesn't matter. So when you're looking at your bead, your herringbone stitch above, it can look like that you got a couple of extra seed beads there, but you're always going with the four out of one. So the two on one side and two on the other side. But once I stitch up and down, this end is going to pull together just like that. Would take me a week to hit the bead, Athena is saying. That's doing the left hand, left hand version. So when I was little, I was, I was in year eight, I think. I think I was in year eight. I was 
14, I was 14, 13, 14, year 8, I think I was. The, the, the system is different in Hungary anyway. So what, what happened is, and I'm just going to zoom out. If you've got any more questions, please do let me know and uh, pop in the comments so I can make sure I answer it for you before I go off. But uh, when I was about seven or eight, year seven or eight or, or, or nine, some, some, somewhere along those lines, I was 13. And um, I had a accident with my right hand and I couldn't write with my white wrist for a long, long time. So the first like week or two, all the teachers were really cute and they were saying like, oh, no, not a problem, you can catch up. Like, you know, perhaps you can photocopy somebody else's work in a classroom and you can learn from that. But after the two weeks, like gone, they were like, I kind of, it was like a little bit harsh, but they were saying like, ah, oh, you're going to have to work out why, how are you going to, how are you going to, deal with this because like you can't have like my arm was in a sleeve like all the way and I couldn't um I had problem with my carpal tunnels I couldn't really do anything with it so I had to learn and do everything with my left hand and um since then I kind of feel like in my brain sometimes I can use right or I can use left hand to eat with it doesn't really matter right that's it for me today do check out the website but um you know, there's so many different colors on there. You can make up your own color versions as well. The kits are $2.99, so they really, like, they're no-brainers. And it comes with instructions as well. It comes with a class. If you want to upgrade to sterling silver, of course you can. Because if you make into somebody as a present, like, it's a £2.50 extra just to have a sterling silver clasp on it. It's always, like, just to make it a little bit more posher when you have sterling silver clasp on your jewelry. Oh, Camille is saying, it's not only a computer, it's harder. Oh, a left hand, right handed. Yeah, I'm actually thinking, do let me know in the comments. I'm actually, I was thinking about this uh, other week that I want to do a series of videos on stitches like peer to stitch, etc. and sector. And I was thinking maybe I will do a right handed version, I will do a left handed version as well, because I do feel like some people who are left handed, they always have to like make an adapt and look at, but I don't know if it would be, do let me know if it would be advantageous for you if I made like a left hand video for a particular stitch. Right, thank you so much. Have a look on the website, check out all the, have I got, no, it's at work. So Monday, we're going to be working with mini duos. I can't wait. I have put together three new colors as well. There's a view in a bead club. We did it back, ooh, I don't know, February, January time, long time ago. So there's three new colorways I put together as well. Um, I really do love like spiral stitches, all of them. So that's what we're going to be doing on Monday. On Sunday night, i be on my own doing um, just a Sunday night chit chat on Kitty Robinson Designs. So do join me there. Otherwise, I will see you here on Monday morning at 10 a.m. Have everybody have a lovely, wonderful weekend and I'll see you very soon. Bye.